Welcome to this new module. We continue with the analysis of the impact of climate change on the gender agricultural productivity gap for smallholder farmers. In this module, we will present an overview of the cross-sectional Ricardian and hedonic approaches for investigating the multiple impacts of climate change on agriculture, and we will show how to adapt the cross-sectional hedonic approach in the case of the gender agricultural productivity gap and climate change. We will also show how econometric coding can be developed to estimate the contemporary relationship between climate change and the gender agricultural productivity gap. We will also provide a brief overview of the results and the practical applications that can be achieved. Then we expect that participants will be able to understand the conceptual and modeling issues of a cross-sectional climate studies approach for studying the impact of climate change on the gender agricultural productivity gap for smallholder farmers. You should also be able to apply econometric techniques and stata to examine the relationship between climate change and the gender agricultural productivity gap, GAPG, especially the effect of climate change on the sources of the gap. This should help us to analyze the effect of climate change on agricultural productivity. The objectives of this course are to describe the estimated specification of plot productivity taking into account the gender issue, and to explain the challenges in cross-sectional climate studies, to develop econometric coding to estimate the contemporary relationship between climate change and the GAPG and to apply these techniques in STATA. Let us begin by looking at the use of cross-sectional analysis to measure climate impacts on the productivity gap. Recent advances in statistical regression take advantage of fine-scaled weather data in both time and space. Modern statistical studies have benefited from large samples of observations and detailed data. When simulating the effects of climate change on agriculture, it is essential to correctly model the underlying relationship between agricultural output and the climactic variables that are predicted to change. Now let us look at the analytical model. As indicated previously, the cross-sectional climate analyses are based on the Ricardian model. This approach uses statistical techniques to examine the relationship between cross-sectional climate data and measures of agricultural productivity, proxied by land value or total farm revenue. This draws on Ricardo's 1817 notion that land values reflect productivity, which is determined by its intrinsic characteristics. It relies on observations of agricultural outputs and explanatory variables for estimation of the production or profit function. Cross-sectional analyses account for adaptation since they assume that farmers at different locations have had time to adapt to their local climate. A significant concern is the ability to control for all the relevant variables that may affect the dependent variables, as the omission of some important variables may lead to biased coefficients in the model. In its standard form, the model can be specified by this equation, where y iat is a measure of the productivity of plot i planted in year t by a member of household a. L iat is an aggregate vector of inputs used, for example, land, labor, pesticides, capital, etc., on plot i in year t by a member of household a. Z IAT is a vector of the individual socioeconomic characteristics of the plot manager I at the household level A during year T. V IAT is a vector of common socioeconomic characteristics of the manager's household members. And C IAT is a vector of shocks, short run characteristics, and climactic change, long run characteristics common to members at the plot level I 
of Household A in Year T. The model explains the variations in productivity between plots managed by male and female farmers in terms of variations in input endowments, socioeconomic characteristics, and shocks and climate change. The augmented production function for plot I under the management of manager J is specified as defined here. Here are the specifications. The estimation of the above model is problematic because some of the input variables are zeros. To prevent observations with zero inputs from being removed from the sample when variables are added to a log, Batisse, 1997, recommends creating a dummy variable equal to 1 for plots reporting 0 for a given input and replacing the 0 quantity with 1. But more recent studies, such as that of Ihuden and Henningsen, 2021, or that of Bellamar and Wishman, 2020, recommend creating a new variable by using an inverse hyperbolic sinus transformation. The advantage of such an approach is that it approximates the natural logarithm of the original variable and allows it to preserve observations of zero value. The estimation of the above model is also problematic due to the presence of serial or spatial autocorrelation in climate variables. It should be noted that spatial autocorrelation therefore differs from serial autocorrelation. Indeed, serial autocorrelation is unidirectional because only the past influences the future. On the other hand, spatial autocorrelation is multidirectional since everything is connected to everything. Spatial autocorrelation has two main sources. First, it can come from the fact that data is affected by processes that connect different locations and that are at the origin of a particular spatial organization of activities. Indeed, the processes of interactions are a source of spatial autocorrelation when events or circumstances in each place affect conditions in other places if the latter interact in one way or another through movements of goods, people, capital, spatial externalities, or all forms of behavior where an economic actor reacts to the actions of other actors. For example, the diffusion of a phenomena, such as a technological diffusion, from one or more places of origin, implies that the intensity of the measurement of this phenomenon depends on the distance to the origin. The locations close to one another at comparable distances from the origin will have similar intensities for the phenomenon studied. As well, it can be the basis of poor model specification, such as spatially self-correlated omitted variables, incorrect functional form, or measurement errors. This is particularly the case when the spatial extent of the phenomenon studied does not coincide with the spatial units of observation. It is then considered a tool for diagnosing and detecting a bad specification of the model. The most widely used statistic for testing spatial autocorrelation in a series is that of Morin, 1948. In practice, spatial models based on the generalized least squares estimator are used for the correction of spatial autocorrelation biases. The gender of a plot's manager is the variable of interest. A progressive approach is applied to explain the gender differences in agricultural productivity. Other studies use different definitions of the gender of a plot's manager. Some examples of these are the gender of the plot manager, the gender of the plot owner, the gender of the plot de jure head, for example, women who are the sole head of their plots because of being single, separated, divorced, or widowed, etc. Three stages are used in the estimation of the model. Stage 1, the estimation of an extended full model to determine the gender productivity gap within and between households. Stage 2, making use of Oaxaca's 1973 and Blinders 1973 type decomposition to break down the part that is explained by group differences 
in the explanatory variables and the unexplained part. Stage 3. Use the re-centered influence function, RIF, to move from the assessment of mean gaps to decompositions at quantiles in the outcome. However, it is worth recalling the following. To obtain both differences, explained and unexplained, non-discriminatory coefficients must be included in the gap equation. The non-discriminatory coefficients are those obtained from the combination of the expected plot harvest value in the pooled data and the gender dummy variable, g. To apply estimation in the first step above, three separate production functions are estimated. Model 1, using the pooled data production function model, and Model 2, using the subsample of plots managed by male farmers data, M, production function model, are described here. Here is Model 3, using the subsample of plots managed by female farmers data, F, production function model. Then, the Oaxaca and Blinder type decomposition is applied to the production function. The twofold decomposition of the gender productivity gap at the mean outcome is then obtained by including the above results. Gap is equal to Q plus U, where Q is a gender gap explained by the group differences in the explanatory variables, including climate change variables. The unexplained U, which is also called the structural effect, is attributed to discrimination or differences in returns and can be broken down into two results as described here. Now, for the third step, we apply the RIF decomposition and re-estimate steps 1 and 2. This measure provides a way of distinguishing between what happens at the top and bottom end of the productivity distribution. RIF regression is like ordinary least squares, OLS, regression, except the dependent variable is replaced by the RIF of the distribution statistics of interest, the log of a plot harvest value per hectare, comma, yield. We can now apply the RIF decomposition and re-estimate steps 1 and 2. Particular attention should be paid to the following elements. The inclusion of the region fixed effect in the production equation. In fact, the regional fixed effect will absorb any confounding effect that might be caused by unobserved factors that are constant over time within each region, for example, county or farmer. The inclusion of regional fixed effects is equivalent to a joint demeaning of the data which consists of subtracting the group mean from each observation that belongs to a group, Wooldridge, 2003. Typically, the region fixed effect considers the spatial persistence of soil characteristics, climate, and geography. We should also pay attention to the linear versus log-linear models. Studies have revealed that a log-linear model fits farmland values more closely than linear models of farmland value, where the climate had an additive effect on farmland value. Schlenker et al. 2005. Cross-sectional studies estimate a Ricardian model using data for a single year or two. However, panel data can be useful for examining cross-sectional impacts. Data for multiple years allows the researcher to test for the stability of the coefficients across time. Multiple years of data also help researchers distinguish between long-term effects which are consistent over time, and short-term effects, which may vary with weather or time. Now, let us look for a summary of results. Here are the descriptive statistics on variables in the database. Here, we present the results of a mean comparison test between genders in different regions. The next three slides show the results of the fixed effects estimation.
The next two slides show the results of the Oaxaca blinder decomposition. Here are the results of the refocused influence function. Let's do an application with Stata using the database built in Module 3. For the fixed effects estimation, use and apply the displayed Stata code. For the Oaxaca blinder decomposition, use and apply the displayed Stata code. For the refocused influence function, use and apply the displayed Stata code.